Hey there. So this lesson is about what's called variation. And those students that are in chemistry already have a little bit of background on this topic because variation is all about how several variables relate to one another. In chemistry, you talk about you know, pressure and volume. As, as volume goes up, pressure goes up. As one variable increases, the other increases. Or you can have cases where as one thing increases, the other one decreases. And that is what variation is all about. So for this particular lesson, we're going to talk about three different types of variation. We're going to have direct variation, where two variables vary directly, or we could say they're directly proportional. There could be inverse variation, so y varies inversely as x, or we could say y is inversely proportional to x. Direct means as one goes up, the other goes up. Inverse means as one goes up, the other goes down. Joint variation is probably the one that's going to show up the least. It's the same as direct, except you're dealing with two variables instead of just one variable. So let me explain what's going to happen here. Okay, Our job, the problem is always going to tell you how the variables relate to each other. For instance, it says y varies directly as x. y varies directly as x and inversely as r squared. x varies inversely to the square of y. So the problem's always going to start by telling you how the variables relate. In our job, we have to create the equation from how they're telling us the variables relate. The hardest part about these problems is in every single one of these variation problems, there's a variable or a letter that never shows up in the problem, but you use it in every single one of your problems, and that's the letter k. So k is going to be known as the constant of variation, which I'll explain here in a second. It's the constant of variation. K is going to be a number in one particular problem that links our variables together. So let me explain how this works. When I turn all these statements into equations, here's how I start. The letter that varies is the thing that equals. So when I start these problems, when it says y varies, I write y equals. When it says y varies, y equals. z varies, z equals. So the thing that varies is the thing that equals. It doesn't always have to be x. Like if I look at example three down here, it says, it says x is inversely proportional. That literally means x varies inversely. That means the same thing. So this one would be x equals. So that's how we start. Now, we're going to use the k. When it says varies directly, my brain associates directly with multiplication. Let me explain what I mean by that. When I see varies directly, here's what my brain does. Y varies, Y equals. When it says directly, that means there's some K value, I don't know what it is, that's being multiplied by this thing here, being multiplied by X. And that's our equation right there when it says y varies, y equals, directly means k times, and then whatever comes next, x. That's our equation. And once we set the equation up, the rest of the problem is pretty simplistic because it's just plug and chug work. You're just plugging numbers in where they go. When it says y varies inversely, so inversely is division. So when I see y varies, y equals, inversely means k divided by whatever comes next. So directly means k times, inversely means k divided by. These are the two that are going to show up the most often. The last one is jointly. Jointly is the same as directly. They're literally the same. The only difference is now you're multiplying by two variables instead of one. So jointly means k times as well. It's multiplication as well. But now we're going to have x and y, so x, y. If you could set up the equation correctly, the rest of the problem is going to go so smoothly, I promise you. So let's do some examples. So we're always going to break these down into three steps. It says y varies directly as x. And I stop, and I write the equation that links these before I even look at all this stuff over here. y varies, y equals directly means k times, 
in this case, x. That's step one. Step two, they're going to give me a scenario to solve for k, to figure out what k is for this problem. They say x is 60 when y is 12. So I'm going to plug those numbers in to figure out what k is for this problem. So I'm going to plug 12 in for y, and I'm going to plug 60 in for x. And I'm trying to figure out what k is. So divide both sides by 60. k is 1 fifth. What, so the reason k is called a constant of variation, for this particular problem, k will always be 1 fifth. It will remain constant. It will never change. I can change what x and y are. Notice x was 60, and now x is 75. Those can change, but once you figure out k, that is locked. That will never change. So that was step two. Step three, now we answer the question. Once we find k, now they're going to pose the final question. They're like, okay, now that you know k is 1 fifth, find y when x is 75. So we go back to the original equation. We're looking for y. We know k is 1 fifth, and we know x is 75. And multiply those, and you get 15. So it's pretty much three steps every time. Set up your equation, use their scenario to find k, use k to answer the final question. Example two, y varies directly as x and inversely as r squared. And then I stop. I don't even look at all the numbers. y varies, y equals directly. So here's how my brain reads this. Directly means k times x. And when I see and inversely, my brain is like and divided by r squared. k is only ever going to show up one time in your equation. You're never going to have k listed twice. So it's k times x and divided by r squared. That's step one. Now we're going to use their scenario to find k. They say y is 2 when x is 12 and r is 6. We're going to plug all those in. So 2 equals 12k over r squared, so 36. Now I just solved this for k. You can multiply by 36 and then divide by 12. So k is 6. Now we answer the question. Find x when y is 4 and r is 6. So we go back to the original equation. We know y is 4. We know k is 6. We don't know x. r is 6, so we divide by 36, r squared, and then we solve. So x is 24. Set up the equation, find k, use k. Example 3, x is inversely proportional, so x varies inversely, so x equals, inversely is k divided by, and the number one mistake students make on this, it says the square of y. The square of y is y squared. Some students will write the square root of y, but if it wanted the square root of y, it would say the square root of y. It would actually use that phrase. So here's our equation. It says y equals 7 when x equals 3. Determine the constant of variation. So this one's nice because this just wants us to find k. It doesn't even want us to use it, so that's really good. So x is 3, y is 7, so 49. So k is 147. And we don't even have to use it. Now, the only other type of thing I can ask is some type of word problem, but don't get freaked out because we treat these the same exact way. I know it looks like a lot, but I'll, I'll explain how to eliminate a lot of the fluff says the number of oscillations per minute made by an object suspended from a given spring varies inversely as the square root of the object's mass. So I'm going to stop, and I need to create my equation. And what I look for is what varies how. So let me explain. It says the number of oscillations, and then it gives all this other fluff, the number of oscillations varies inversely. Oscillations varies. 
and you can use whatever variables you want. I know some people don't like to use O, but I don't care to, if I use O. So oscillations varies. O equals. Inversely means K divided by. So oscillations varies. O equals K divided by. The square root of the object's mass. So the square root of M. I would encourage you to use the letters of the stuff from the problem so you know where you're going to be plugging your numbers into. Students that use X and Y all the time tend to make some mistakes because they forget what X is and what Y is. Here's what I mean by that. So it says an object with a mass of 400, so I know I'm going to plug 400 where mass is. But if you add Y and X, you might be a little more confused on where to plug the stuff. So 400 is going to go where M is. Make 60 oscillations per minute. So 60 is going to go where O is. So they're giving me the scenario to find K. 60 equals K divided by the square root of 400. So 20. So K is 1,200. Now we use K to answer the question. How many oscillations per minute will be made by an object with a mass of 625? So now I know K. I'm looking for O. And I have a new M value. So O equals 1,200 divided by the square root of 625, which is, I don't even know what that is. Good thing I have my calculator right here. 25. I should have known that. 1,200 divided by 25, 48. The only thing I'm going to ask from you on the word problems is that you label whatever your answer is in the end. So if you just said 48, I'd probably take off a half a point or so. I want to know what this means. This will just help me see if you actually understand what you found. So 48 oscillations per minute. There you go. Let me know if you have any questions.